Yo, what's going on, guys? It's your boys from Reactions here. My name's Logan. And my name's Francesco. And in today's video, we are going to be discussing about the 2021 what event. What to expect from Apple in 2021. Yes, we're going to discuss everything that you can expect. Also, check out our new frames over here that we uh, put up for our Apple videos. They're going to be up for any video in the studio, but it's just... They're basically Apple patents from different Apple products. We got a, an iPad over there, an iMac, a MacBook, the uh, iPhone uh, 4 or 5. I, I, yeah, that, no, that's the 4. Uh, uh, the Apple 3 and the Ma original Macintosh from 1986. So, lots of nice uh, decor over here. So, let's get into this video. Here we go. So, uh, let's start with this, uh, this was updated uh, on Sunday, I just updated this so it's all up to date. Thank you to Mac Rumors, Apple Tomorrow, John Prosser and Concept Creator for these renders. First half of 2021, what to expect? First of all, my personal favorite and what I've been waiting for for a long time, the redesigned iMac. They're working on new iMac models that will have Apple Silicon chips feature iPad Pro design language and thinner bezels with maybe a 23 to 24 inch screen size. Uh, the silicon chips that they're working on for the iMac could have 16 high power cores and 4 high efficiency cores, uh, but the high end desktop models may have 32 high performance cores, perhaps replacing the iMac Pro because uh, just recently, a couple of days ago, Apple discontinued the iMac Pro, not officially, but on their website, you can no longer uh, uh, do any configs to it. You can't change it. It's just one uh, iMac Pro model. That's all you can get, and it's for a uh, limited, uh, while well, quantities limited quantities last. So that means that once they sell out of iMac Pros, they're not making any more, and it will officially be uh, discontinued from Apple's website. Which probably means that the iMac is going to be so powerful with this Apple Silicon, more powerful than the iMac Pro. So it doesn't make sense to have the iMac Pro that's not as powerful as your iMac, which is technically supposed to be more. So it just doesn't make sense. Also, uh, uh, re a reason why is the iMac comes just in silver. You don't have a choice. The iMac Pro is differentiated because it comes in space gray. You get a space gray keyboard and a space gray mouse. But according to John Prosser, new iMac info emerged. He says that uh, the 2020 iMac models will come in five colors to match the fourth generation iPad Air. Silver, space gray, green, sky blue, and rose gold. So as you can see, these renders in the bottom right corner of what he expects them to look like. This is going to basically kind of bring back the original iMac uh, with the colors. It's going to be a very interesting twist on that. So maybe that's why there's another reason why they'll discontinue. Not just for power, but if they want to offer colors, then it would give the iMac Pro would have no differentiation, so it doesn't make sense. It may it doesn't make sense to keep the iMac Pro. It makes sense to discontinue it because it hasn't had an update since 2017. So that's the iMac. It's expected to be released uh, either at a March event, uh, which could be coming in a week or so, which I'm very excited for. Uh, hopefully it happens, or maybe in the fall. So they either might release them all at once in March, or all at once in the fall, which I'm not hoping for, I want them in March, or they might do a staggered release where we get the smaller model in March and the larger model in the fall, which I'm fine with. As long as we get a model in March, I'm fine with. That's what I want. iPad Mini 6. So, iPad Mini 6, Ming-Chi Kuo says that they're working on an 8.5 to 9 inch uh, model that could replace the current 7.9 inch model because uh, it has massive bezels. It'll have possibly a mini LED display um, with several iPads in the lineup. As you can see, a, a square, a squared off design like the iPad Air and Pro, bringing it up to the iPad mini. And he expects that it could uh, happen in the first half of 2021, maybe at the March event, maybe in June, who knows, maybe at a press release, never know. Okay, ninth generation iPad. Uh, they're working on one with a 10.5 inch display, A13 chip, uh, expected to be released in the spring of 2021, most likely at a March event. Usually that's when they discuss new iPads. Um, it could have four gigs of RAM, touch ID, lighter design, lightning port. The new iPad is expected to come uh, maybe in March, maybe later in the year. Assuming maybe earlier in the year, but we never know 100%. Let's move on to the next product. iPad Pro, uh, very long awaited uh, refresh. Now, it was refreshed in March of 2021, but this has been a very anticipated refresh. 
It's going to be getting a mini LED display, same uh, size as 11 inch and 12.9 inch. Uh, mini LED display is like almost OLED, and it's going to have 5G connectivity, which uh, I really could not care for. Um, uh, who who really buys cellular iPads and puts cellular plans on their iPad? Who does that? Like, I don't. But I can tell you that. It's going to have the rumored A14, powerful A14X chip, and uh, um, it's going to be as possibly as powerful as the chip that they have in the M1 Max right now. Production on the Mini LED iPad Pro supposedly began in the fourth quarter of 2020, so that would have been at the end of 2020. So it's possibly ready to go for early on in 2021, maybe at a March event. Again, that's speculation, but very high chance of that. No physical refresh there. AirPods 3 will be getting a uh, big redesign. They're working on a form factor similar to AirPods Pro featuring a shorter stem, replaceable silicone ear tips. They will not have uh, features such as noise cancellation so they can differentiate AirPods Pro to regular AirPods. Could see battery life improvements. We don't know much about AirPods at this time, but we're expecting them to launch in the first half of 2021, likely in the first quarter. This is a leaked image from 52 Audio of a casing for the AirPods 3, so who knows what we'll see. AirPods Pro are also uh, supposed to be getting a refreshed design with a new wireless chip. The design is set to eliminate the shorter stem that you see right here and maybe just a little circle, no stem at all just to compete with Google and Samsung. Makatakar believes they will launch in April, but that has yet to be confirmed. AirTags, AirTags, and AirTags. Long-awaited product, we've been waiting over three years for these. We thought they were gonna come in 2019, never did. 2020, never did. They got so many delays. They better come at the March event this year, which looking to be like 90% chance based on uh, info from Apple. So what um, is going on here, Apple released an iOS 14.5 beta last week and it has software features in the Find My app that are supposed to be for AirTags, like Bluetooth tracking devices and stuff like that. There's a new section in the Find My app. It's not released to the public yet, it's just in beta testing right now. And iOS 14.5 is expected to be released to the public midway through March. And that's when an Apple event is supposed to happen. March 16th is the rumored date. We'll get more info about that this coming week. So as of editing this video, John Prosser tweeted out this morning, Monday, March 8th, that uh, the March event is going to be on the 23rd instead of the previously rumored 16th. He tweeted this number saying he wrote the number in his tweet, uh, 23. And we're all assuming that means March 23rd for the event because that is a Tuesday. Um, he also did not realize that the OnePlus event is on the same day, which is, it's funny, but it's kind of irrelevant. And he also continued in his tweet thread that uh, he got updated info from a reliable source saying that the products that are ready to launch are AirTags, iPad Pro, AirPods, and Apple TV. So Apple TV very overdue for a refresh, AirPods, they are due for a refresh, so is the iPad Pro. And AirTags, as you know, have been rumored for a very, very long time, over three years. And finally, it's we've never been this close to actually getting AirTags. And if they're announced, which seems like 95% chance they are, 99% chance, um, then I'm, it's going to be a uh, big, big coverage by the press about air tags it's gonna be very interesting we will be covering that in a video unfortunately the iMac is not on this list that he tweeted which is interesting because we all thought that the iMac was gonna be coming at this event now if it doesn't that means we'll probably have to wait till later like June or even later which sucks I wanted it earlier we've been waiting for a while for the iMac refresh so I don't know what the delays are for I thought it was ready to go Maybe they'll surprise us. Maybe Apple will say surprise, and here's the iMac, and no one knew about it that it was gonna, that everyone thought it might not come, but it ends up coming. I'm hoping that's what happens, but you never know. Apple is very sneaky with their plans. So, and um, AirTags are basically a competitor with Tile Trackers. They're a little uh, circle that works based off Bluetooth, and you can attach it to many different things: luggages, bag, camera, uh, wallets, keys, different things like that. So you can find them if, if, if the device itself does not have a physical, like a phone, you can track via the Find My app because it has its own tracking uh, feature. But luggage, they don't have tracking features, but if you attach AirTags, it will have its own tracking feature. That's the feature. Hopefully we'll see them 
Let's go on to the next product iPhone 12 MagSafe battery pack. They're working on a battery pack for the iPhone 12 model, which will attach magnetically, as you can see here in the picture. Uh, there's no word on when it's coming, but uh, they have to overcome some technical issues. There was a mention of the battery pack in iOS 14.5, so it could be launching in mid-March, just like iOS 14.5 will be. Um, uh, John Prosser says there will be two versions of the MagSafe battery pack. One will feature reverse charging. It may be able to uh, charge both the phone and AirPods on the back at the same time. That would be cool. Um, it's supposed to work with the iPhone 12 models just like MagSafe. It was supposed to come out with the iPhone 12, but it run in, ran into software issues. That's why it was delayed. They're trying to solve an issue that has caused the iPhone to uh, report that the battery pack is overheating. And uh, there are also problems when a user switches between using the MagSafe battery pack, when a case is attached, and when the case is removed. So some issues they need to overcome there. Okay, so now let's go to the WWDC 20, uh, 2021 event and rumors for that. Uh, Apple is rumored to, they're already working on iOS 15 and iPad OS 15, but we, unlike yes, last year, last year we knew tons and tons of details about what we could expect in iOS 14, and some of those we got, but now we don't have, we have no clue as to what to expect, it's still pretty early, maybe we'll get some more insight in May, April or May, but for now we have nothing, and we will be updated if you get any news by us. Same for watchOS 8, no news, uh, expected to come at WWDC. macOS 12, uh, so Apple is going away from their macOS 10. They would usually do macOS 10, not 10, 10.11, 10 10.12, 10 10.13, 10 10.14, blah, blah, blah. Then they moved to macOS 11 last year, so now we're, exp and they've been doing macOS uh, 11.1.2.3, .1 so we know that it's gonna be now full numbers, not point numbers in macOS. Maybe we'll get Mammoth, that's just speculation based off a place in California. Yeah, let's get some Willy Mammoth over here. Let's go to second half of 2021, what to expect. This could be a September, October, possibly another November event, who knows, or press releases. The main highlight at the end of the year is the iPhone 13. We're expecting same sizes as the iPhone 12. Uh, 6.1 inch, 6.7 inch for the Pros and uh, 5.4 inch for the Mini. Um, Apple is expected to use the uh, same design. At least one of those iPhones could potentially have a portless design with no lightning port on the phone. So just wireless charging and MagSafe charging. Uh, that'll be their, their way to get into a future of wireless charging. It will most likely have 120 hertz displays, but uh, uh, recently Apple applied for a patent to have a 240 hertz display. So what if they put that in the iPhone 13? Then you're like, okay, Apple, you've given us 60 hertz up until now. We've been asking for 120 hertz so long. Oh, you want 120 hertz? Here's 240 hertz. Like that's, I, that would be amazing, but. It's probably just gonna be 120 hertz. Back to this. It's gonna be a faster A15 chip, uh, upgraded 5G modem from Qualcomm, new updated cameras, nothing special. Uh, updated face ID, possibly under display touch ID, but that might not happen this year. That might be delayed for a 2022 iPhone. We don't know. Maybe they'll put char uh, the touch ID in the power button just like they did on the iPad Air. It, they might include Touch ID. It's still speculation, uh, but it's early, so we don't. It could change. It's like I said, expected to be announced at the September 21 event. No delays this year, unlike last year. So as per usual. And uh, one rumor that popped up recently is it might not even be called iPhone 13. It might be an S year. It might be iPhone 12s this year because there's not major upgrades. Or if the notch shrinks, maybe it will be a 13. Again, not, it's still too early to tell. Next, Apple Watch Series 7 and Apple Watch SE. We don't know much about this yet, but we know about maybe new health functionality is a possibility, um, as the Apple Watch design might adopt uh, solid state buttons that don't physically click, like on the AirPods. It's also expected to have a redesign, so squared off edges, similar to the iPad Air and iPad Pro. They've been also researching a method to do uh, non-invasive measure, uh, measuring of blood glucose levels. So right now, the only way to do that is prick your finger and then put in this little machine and it tests your blood for the glucose levels. But maybe they'll find a way to use the heart rate sensors and, and your finger to, uh, without pricking it, uh, so non-invasive, uh, to find out blood glucose levels. That would be really helpful for people. 
Also, uh, there's a chance we could see an updated version of the SE. The SE was introduced in 2020 last year as a lower cost alternative to the Series 7. Uh, those will most likely come alongside iPhones at September 21 event, 2021 event. So not much to go off right now. And 14.1 and 16.1 inch MacBook Pros. We're expecting to get uh, redesigns with Apple Silicon for those. Now we did get Apple Silicon 13 inch MacBook Pro in 2020, but it was the exact same design just different internals and different architecture. Now, we're expected this year to completely redesign the whole look of the MacBook. We might get slimmer bezels, more screen real estate, maybe mini LED displays, maybe Face ID, who knows, Apple Silicon chips, as many as 16 power cores and four efficiency cores. They're also developing 16 and 32 GPU core options. Uh, that'd be insane, and it would most likely come in 2021 this year, but we don't know exactly, maybe October event, again, that's speculation. MacBook Air recently popped up in the rumors saying that it'll have a thinner and lighter version of uh, the current MacBook Air, and it will feature maybe MagSafe charging for the first time in five years, and um, MagSafe, if you don't recall, is instead of a, a port where you plug in like USB-C on the Macs where you have to plug in something it's just on the iPhones it's on the back but on the MacBook the original ones it's just like a magnet that just clicks on it doesn't uh, you don't insert it, it just clicks very nice that would be a good uh, alternative so uh, the new Mac MacBook Air could come out in the second half of 2021 at the earliest but they might choose to hold it till 2022 we don't know for sure and products with unknown release dates so, iPhone SE Plus, John Prosser says that we might be getting one of those. Uh, it's the Plus version of the current iPhone SE that features a full screen design, no face ID, a touch ID fingerprint sensor built into the power button. It, it would be similar to the iPad Air design, which has all display, but without face ID, the iPad Air instead uses touch ID and the power button, we all know that. Perhaps 5G support that no one asked for in the iPhone SE, which will eat your battery life. Eat it, yeah! Hopefully they'll uh, per, uh, uh, get more uh, high efficiency batteries so we can get better battery life with 5G, which is what they're working on for the iPhone uh, 13 or 12S. Um, could happen in the second half of 2021. We're still unsure. It might even be delayed until 2022. So let, we'll see what happens with that. Apple TV, uh, we might get, the last Apple TV update came in 2017. We are very overdue for an update. Multiple sources suggested we can expect a new model to launch this year. It could be equipped with either an A12X Bionic chip or A14 Bionic chip using the 2020 iPhones. Don't know. Higher power chip means better performance for iOS games, that's all. The next generation models could also have 64 and 128 gig storage options, a new remote, maybe a gaming controller that they've been working on. Possibly not, maybe they'll save that for something else. A uh, Find My feature, a U1 chip, like the HomePod Mini has, so it could work as a home hub. Also some unconfirmed features, like higher end version of the Apple TV that offers console-like gaming performance, like almost like a PS5, but Apple's version. That would be cool. Um, next, uh, an Intel Mac Pro. Now you're probably wondering why would they release an Intel Mac Pro if they're done with Intel. Well, they've been working on a uh, refresh of the Intel Mac Pro, which is like updated uh, chips, updated GPU, little better ports, the little things here and there, exact same design, just to uh, bring it more up to date. No major changes to the enclosure, but uh, the Apple Silicon Mac Pro, which is very uh, anticipated, it will be a completely redesigned, smaller form factor because it doesn't need as much space due to M1's very small design. Uh, half the size. John Prosser believes the smaller Mac Pro will feature a design that looks like three to four Mac Minis stacked on top of one another with a compute unit on the bottom and a big heat sink on the top. As you can see in the bottom right corner, that's a render from John Prosser and Concept Creator. Uh, so we might be, it might look like that instead of the classic uh, one that we got from 2019. It might include the high end, it will include the high end silicon chip and it could have as many as 32 high performance cores they're also testing 16 and 32 core graphics options, and they're developing expensive 64 and 128 core GPUs. That's insane. Uh, for its highest end machines. Could come in 2022. That's the most likely situation because they said it would take two years. So that's most likely what's going to happen. Foldable iPhone. Some rumors here. Uh, Ming-Chi Kuo says um, we might get a 7.5 or 8 inch foldable 
uh, iPhone with a flexible OLED display by 2023. Uh, last year we got a rumor from a Chinese supply chain suggesting Apple is aiming for a 2022 release date for a foldable iPhone. If it doesn't make it for 2022, then it'll get pushed to 2023. Uh, they've developed several screen sizes, including a 6.7 inch display on the 12 Pro Max, just like the 12 Pro Max, and others in 8 inch range, because it folds. And it would be an invisible hinge. Leaker John Prosser has claimed that Apple is working on a foldable iPhone prototype that features two separate display panels that are connected by a hinge rather than a single display like the Samsung Galaxy Fold. But this is not in line with what Bloomberg uh, says, so it's very conflicting reports. Another rumored uh, product to come in uh, this year, next year, or the year after is Apple Glass. We know that they've been working on for a while and they're working on two different kinds of things. So, they haven't been much rumors uh, right now, but the date to range is either late this year to 2023. Uh, we might get some AR device this year, maybe not, who knows. They're working on two projects in the works that includes a set of smart glasses and a separate headset, with the latter device uh, supposedly launching first. The headset is rumored to feature a similar to Facebook's Oculus Quest but a sleeker, lighter weight design. It's said to include a high resolution display, built-in cameras, along with technologies like 3D environmental scanning, advanced human detection. Apple is aiming to create an app store for the headset with a focus on gaming, streaming video content, and video conferencing. So that would be very cool. They would have both a, 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 like a VR headset, like the Facebook Oculus Quest, and regular glasses that you can have with prescription. You can have your prescription glasses put on the Apple Glass, you wear them like regular glasses, but they'll have a display and LiDAR scanners in them, so you'll see your text messages, phone calls right in your eyes. Very, very futuristic. And the final one uh, today, Apple Car. There's been a lot of twists and turns in this saga of Apple's electric car development, but reliable analyst Ming-Chi Kuo believes Apple is still planning on a fully autonomous vehicle rather than just an autonomous car software with a launch to happen between 2023 and 2025. So, some people thought that they would just develop a software that makes your car autonomous and you can apply it to any car that would support it, but no, now we're thinking that Apple might just release their entire whole Apple car and make their own Apple car with their own software, their own architecture, have computer chips in it, which would be very cool, and it would be fully self-driving, fully futuristic, now they said 2023 to 2025, but they're still in the early, early stages of development. Could even be delayed till 2027. Very uh, long time until this happens. This is just uh, worth including because it's an interesting product. That is all the products we're expecting in 2021. Thank you to Mac Rumors, Apple Tomorrow, and also John Prosser and Concept Creator for, room, uh, for these renders. And that's it for today's video. I know that was a lot of information, but thank you for sticking along. Yes. Um, we really appreciate it. So that's it for today's video, guys. If you want to like, comment, subscribe, and if you can please leave that notification bell rung and everything would be okay. Yes, so you know, so don't forget to check out all our FLR videos. The playlist will be up here. Don't forget to check those out. We're uploading every week, uh, weekly recaps. And uh, we hope you like our new studio here yep. with all our Apple patents, a very nice design. Mm -hmm. Very excited for a possible March event. Uh, next week, I'm hoping that that happens and we get uh, an announcement for yes. that. And the iMac, I'm praying the iMac comes because I've been, been all waiting forever. So we'll see you next week for another video. Peace! Peace.